Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. I'm hoping you guys are all having a wonderful day. So in today's video, as you could tell by the title, we will be doing a early kind of discussion about the fall and winter. For those that are saying it's too early, you're right, it kind of is, but uh, I mean, this weather channel, I'm on here, it's a hobbyist, I'm a hobbyist. We do this for the fun of it, it's just speculation. Um, it could come true, I'll show you the evidence, what I have presented, uh, what I've worked out for you, and. You could see for yourself whether it makes sense or not. Um, it's as you can tell by the title. There could be a rather dramatic fall and winter. Now that doesn't mean all snowy, bitter cold, historic. It's actually there could be some extreme heat, extreme cold, a combination of that stuff. And yes, I'll be talking about two seasons in one video. Um, so without further confusion, let me just start talking about that. Uh, before though, before we get into that, if you guys would like to support this channel, if you like what you're seeing, if you watch the video, or this is your second, third video you're watching and you haven't subscribed, consider doing that. Obviously, if you enjoy it, you could also give it a thumbs up. Um, otherwise, uh, thank you just so much for watching in the first place. And if you have any comments or concerns, I am not like most YouTubers. I pretty much answer every single comment. So uh, feel free to leave one down below. Okay, uh, let's, get, let's get started. So I wanted to start off this video by demonstrating to you guys what is an Enzo? What is a La Nina? Because I know I do have a lot of viewers that know what that is and most people that are... Uh, kind of have been interested in weather for multiple years and know what that is, but I do have new viewers or viewers that just are less familiar with this type of uh, winter forecasting. And just because of that, I want to go over and show you what I mean by uh, Enzo or El Nino. So these are the ocean temperatures. Notice if you need a bit of orientation, right? Here's a North American continent. Here's a South American continent. Here's Asia. Here's Oceania, Africa, Europe. And notice that um, what we have, and obviously Antarctica right there, <laughs> uh, what we have is anomalies, as I mentioned, some areas are above average, some areas are below, and the Enzo region specifically is this, right off the coast of Ecuador, off this South American coast, we have an area of water that's, it doesn't really look like much right now, but uh, whether or not this area of water, which is right here, the Enzo, um, in the eastern, really just across all of the Pacific Ocean, the equatorial uh, Pacific Ocean right here off the, the coast again of Ecuador and Peru, uh, we have waters that if they're below average at 0 0.5 or below, it's considered a La Nina. If it's above at 0 0.5 or warmer, it's considered an El Nino. And anything in between, it's a neutral. And right now, you may be looking at this and being like, okay, so what on earth is going on here right now? And again, it's a neutral. So yeah, there isn't really a distinct La Nina or El Nino. It's kind of in between, which is why you see pockets of warmth, pockets of cool weather or cool waters, I should say. But if you were to take a look at a classic El Nino or La Nina, you could do a quick, quick search up of that. You would see that uh, the waters usually here are a brilliant orange, right? Or they are a deep blue. Um, obviously, it doesn't really go much deeper than a negative 1.6 for a La Nina or a same with El Nino, you know, it doesn't go five degrees above or below average. Usually they stay within a one to two degree difference, but um, that's what that's what the Enzo region is. And again, if it's a La Nina, it's cooler waters. That's that's pretty much all it is. It's not, you know, that scientific um, in terms of just identifying what it is. But the impacts of it are very, very complicated and they are hard to forecast for. Um, by the way, the, the way that... Um, they initially found out that the waters impact uh, the weather, um, or that they impact anything at all, is that there's Peruvian fishermen off the coast again in that water, and they realized that based on whether that water was warmer or cooler, it significantly impacted their fishing uh, uh, fishing captures and the efficiency of their fishing. So, um, obviously, one thing led to another. I don't know the exact, exact story following afterwards, but they soon figured out that it has much larger global effects, and they realized that it does impact especially North America and Europe um, during the winter months. So, uh, yeah, quick little story about that. But I do want to go back now, and let's get rid of all this drawing, all those scribbles, and I want to show you what the graphics are showing. So this is what we are in right now, um, July. So right here, you can see they don't really update this based on month to month. It's always a bit behind, but notice, we were in the La Nina the past winter, and we were in a neutral, or we are right now. You can see we were pretty much exiting it right there on the, um, <clears throat> in April. Um, yeah, right there. Uh, sorry, that's actually May. And we went into a neutral for a brief period, and now we're going back into a La Nina. And um, that's again, most likely what's going to happen at least. You can see the models um, updated 8th of July. This is what they show, look at that. They're favoring a La Nina. If you recall, I showed you this a few weeks ago. It was more uh, more lined up with the neutral. It was a 50-50. Now, you can see it's almost a 70% chance of La Nina, especially during uh, late fall. And then the neutral chances on La Nina, chances are still a bit blurry further out, but definitely 
you can see right now neutral going into a line. You know, these are some weather models that predict how you know this will go. And uh, by the way, here you can see you have the 0.5 degree. Everything above is an El Nino. Anything below is a La Nina. And you can see that a lot of these models, according to this group, which again I would say these are a bit less accurate, are showing a neutral bordering a La Nina. So again, I would say that a neutral is still possible. But again, the Climate Prediction Center is favoring a La Nina. And then this set of models, based on years past that I've looked at this slideshow presentation, which I first looked at it when I think it was in eighth grade of high school. So it's been a while, and um, they haven't changed the layout of this, which is honestly good. And notice, a lot of them are showing a La Nina. Some of them are showing a neutral, but you can see that dashed lines average, and a lot of them are taking it into a La Nina. Now again, some are very strong, some are less. It doesn't really matter um, that much. Again, at this point, we're trying to figure out whether it's a La Nina or not. Then we could start worrying about whether it's going to be a strong or weak one. So what does that mean? Well, let me take a uh, show. Uh, let me show you some years that uh, had some falls that were La Nina. Similar years, pretty much to this year, where they were years that had a neutral and then went into a La Nina. So I didn't choose years like, for example, right here, 2010 into 2011. Even though the La Nina did occur during the winter, I wanted to make it very specific. The years I chose, and it's basically going from a neutral into a La Nina. And notice that this neutral was there, but for me, it was a bit too early on in the year. April, May. We are in the neutral right now, going into the La Nina. Uh, you can see the La Nina was here already in June, which this year it wasn't. And it was exiting from an El Nino. So I made it very, very, very specific few years. Uh, the one I did choose for this year, or uh, for my graphic, was actually last year. You can see 2020 from a neutral into a La Nina at around the similar time we could go in this year. And I also chose 2017. You could see a neutral going into a La Nina and many more. This is just a few years I chose on this 10-year uh, graphic. So without further ado, I want to show you. Uh, we have, I have quite a bit of slides lined up here. So this might be quite a bit of, uh, of talking to do. So just bear with me. But I think this is cool. Notice there's the date, September through November of 2020. This was a fall that had similar Enzo conditions to this year. Now, again, I do want to preface, a lot of things depend on how the fall comes out. It's not just based on a La Nina. But, I, I, you know, I wanted to see if there is some sort of resemblance between years that are going from a neutral into a La Nina and how the falls look. Notice, this is a fall. I will show you the winters in just a bit. You'll see a trend with the fall, a very, very... Uh, a very uh, significant trend, and actually, last year was one of the few years that really didn't have as strong of a trend as most other years did. Notice, it had quite a bit of cool year, uh, air in southern Canada, and everywhere else it was warm. And if I were to look at the next year, you know, uh, the one that was most recent, September to November of 2017, similar, very warm, less cool air, it's just, you know, very warm, in fact, hot. I remember this year, that was, I think we had some of the hottest uh, temperatures here in Chicago in October. I think it was October 15th. I was walking to my school, and it was like 90, 92 degrees. I mean, I remember everyone was talking about it, how, wow, there's going to be no winter. You know, it's going to be so, so warm, uh, which, again, people always make those type of claims, which, you know, I mean, it's reasonable. But um, notice, uh, September through November of 28, 2008, you know, a bit different. Notice that there are uh, more warmer colors to the north, cooler air further towards the south. But notice that it isn't a complete change. You know, there isn't a massive cool air uh, outbreak. It's definitely cool across the south, which again, I think this year might be similar because look at what we've been seeing so far this year. It's been cool towards the south, but you know, that's the summer that's been going on. The fall could be completely different. But so again, we go from a relatively warm fall, a very warm fall to a, another La Nina that had a warmer fall for some, cooler for some. So, you know, that was a bit of an outlier year. Again, there are many impacts, not just one La Nina that goes into this. But then look at that, another, another warm year, a very warm year across much of the United States, just excluding the West Coast. And this is again, September through November of 2005. Now, I chose a few more years, 1998, another year. Look at that. Do you see what the pattern? I think it's pretty clear. It's just warm. It's a warm fall, and it's broadly warm across much of the United States. There are a few areas that are cooler. Notice New England, the West. But again, um, really, and that's actually even that it's a, is, is a trend. Notice this one also had the West a bit cooler. And this one didn't, but um, this one also didn't. This one is just warm all throughout. So again, the small little factors play a role. But look, I mean, all of them are warm. Now look at 1995. This was a year that was <laughs> rather particular in its uh, cool weather. And the winter was no no different, but notice that it did show a lot of cool air, so it's one of the outliers. So again, you can see that uh, th there is some uh, quite a bit of 
differences, right? Um, some years are a bit warmer, some years are a lot warmer, and some years are just completely different, which could be like this this year. I don't see any indications of that. But um, again, uh, notice mo for the most part, the trend is warmth. Look at this one. In 1983, there was a bit more cool air towards the north and the south, but generally a warmer a summer or warmer fall. And again, it was a bit cooler towards the northwest. And some of these, this is, I'm assuming, a line year was a bit in place a bit earlier, probably starting from October, which is why there's a bit more cool air across the northwest. Now, I think I have one more year. Yep, September through November of 1984. Notice this one is a completely cooler one. So while the trend was rather uh, warm for the most years, there were a few years, again, that were cooler. But um, I think, uh, if I recall, 84 and um to an 83 were years where the La Nina was already in place by the time it was mid to late or mid fall. So uh, some of those impacts already started uh, forming um, into fall, uh, creating cooler conditions. But even that isn't really an indicator that, you know, an early forming La Nina means a cooler winter. There are definitely other uh, kind of factors that played into this. Uh, I think I could do more research into this and find that, but that would, again, be a bit more extensive, but I'm willing to do that. But notice, um, yeah, definitely a few uh, outliers in uh, either directions, but overall, I combined them. Oh, sorry, this is the surface precipitation rate. So I'll show you the combined uh, temperatures for all those years, but this is, again, September through November, so the fall of all those years, but in terms of precip, I just wanted to see if there's any remarkable signs. Really not much, uh, pretty wet towards the Caribbean, I'm assuming, you know, this could mean a lot of tropical activity through the fall as La Niñas tend to favor uh, tr the tropics. And even though this is fall, you know, tropical storm season or hurricane season ends in late November. So, uh, yeah, that could mean a lot of them. Uh, we could have a pretty wild fall ahead of us. But notice, drier towards the south, bit wetter towards the north and west. But just because it's not happening right now across the northwest, the cooler temperatures and, uh, sorry, uh, the more precip, you know, the, the uh, higher precip doesn't mean that it won't. We're in July. We're not in the September through November time frame, which I isolated for these years. So, again, uh, there could be quite a bit of change on the way, potentially. Now, notice, I want to compile all the years but in terms of the, the temperature. So I showed you individual years in terms of temperature, but this is how they look like all combined. Um, yeah, you can see that even though there were a few outliers of cool weather, generally speaking, it was the warmth that favored much of the United States. And it favored it to a pretty large degree by, you know, even almost in some areas, one degree, which is quite a bit for this many years compiled. So you could see the thing, I included the title uh, in the title, a dramatic fall or in a winter difference. And our... Uh, or I think, I don't know exactly what I'll call it, but I don't mean that, you know, everything's going to be cold and snowy. Everything is going to be a snow filled. Look at this. It could go from a very warm fall, right? A lot of the models are showing that. And I'm, I'm agreeing. I think this fall could be warm. Most La Nina falls are rather on the warm side to a very interesting winter. And I want to start talking about that right now. So I chose the very same years, exact same years I just showed you, but... I, um, you know, did the December through February and notice how it's one year ahead because the February is the start of a new year or it's in the new year. So I showed you no, uh, September through November of 2020. Now you can see it's the winter into 2021 and it's always a year that ends this timeline that I have to include here. So notice, uh, this was last year. Um, yeah, notice obviously the cold across Texas, um, uh, was definitely more profound, uh, than, um, it was expected, but notice it was rather an average year if you were to wash it out overall, but it was a year of extremes. Um, there was, uh, you know, periods of heat, periods of lots of snow, warmer towards Canada, but um, that's how it looked like. So, you know, not a, again, if you were to look at last winter, for the most part, it wasn't a warm, mild winter. While there were areas that did see warmer temperatures or missed out on snow, overall, it was a, 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 a I would say almost a classic La Nina winter. Now this is again 2017 to 2018. Look at this. Look at the winter. The, the spring, again the fall that was before this winter was very 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 warm. I think it was one of the warmest ones I showed you on a graph. But look what happened. So it stayed warm across the southwest. Was cool towards Texas. The northeast was a bit of a mix. If it was warmer, it was barely. But towards the north, you could see it was cooler. If you recall, 2017 of uh, December, a massive cold outbreak occurred. I mean. It was, uh, it was cold. I think here New Year's Day was uh, three degrees below Fahrenheit here in Chicago. So it was definitely a, a interesting winter, and many areas did pick up quite a bit of snow. Um, I think uh, the, uh, the Upper Plains were one of the areas that picked up some decent snows and decent blizzards that year. Now this is December through February of two thousand eight. Notice 
Definitely not as cold or warm as the year, or previous years. You can see there's not as much of an anomaly. Uh, similar to this past winter. More cool than warm. But, be, you know, both sides are kind of barely there. A bit warmer, a bit cooler. I remember this year, um, 2008, if I was, uh, I was looking at the records, it was a very wet, very snowy year. The cold wasn't as profound. But notice, definitely an interesting year. At least it's not a heat wave during the winter, right? Um, again, winters are usually cold, and if you get below average, you'll probably remember that winter for a few years <laughs> in your bones. Um, but yeah, notice, uh, definitely a... Uh, not a warm winter, uh, but I wouldn't say really a frigid one either. Definitely a, a, at least a moderate, you know, not bad for all the snow lovers. You could definitely get a lot of snowstorms. I know my, um, my city, Chicago, got, I think, 60 inches out of this winter. So again, it was a lot of, a lot of snow. Now, this is one year that turned out pretty warm. Look at this, 2005, 2006, the fall was warm, and the winter was rather warm. Now again, there's definitely places that still saw snow. I, I think Chicago at that year, I'm just speaking about Chicago, I, Constantly because that's why I live and I know uh, the records because I looked at them uh, when I was younger always. Uh, 2006, we did, I think, see around average snowfall. Um, so it wasn't anything in particular. But, you know, just because it was warmer doesn't mean there wasn't a winter. But you can see it was definitely a warmer year, not a cold one. Now we go further. December through February of 1999. Look at this one. A very, very, very warm winter across a very large terrain. Now notice, there are indications of a line across the northwest, a bit chillier right there. Um, uh, again, th periods of cool weather. But I do want to say, even though this looks like an absolute whitewash of winter weather, the La Nina of this year, of uh, 1999, I know for my uh, area, again, the Midwest, there's a giant system. It was called the New Year's Eve blizzard or snowstorm. And I think it still stands as the second most amount of snow dropped on uh, Chicago. I think it was 21 inches of snow, which was uh, an incredible amount of snow. So, uh, yeah, it was still an interesting year, but it was not as cold. Notice, it was rather on a warmer side. Let's continue going back. Look at 1985, December through February. It was definitely a cooler, cooler, cooler La Nina year. And you can see even, again, it's not just all about La Nina. You can see these were technically both La Ninas, but they're so different. Look at this one. That's bitter cold right there. That was a brutal winter. I obviously don't remember this one, and I haven't read much about it, but I could assume there are some folks that remember this winter, or or at least have some experiences with it, um, especially towards southern Canada and the northern plains. My goodness, that is cold. Um, and I have one more year, 1984. Notice uh, the anomalies were there. It was on a cooler side, but again, not really anything in particular um, that was super uh, cold or warm. Definitely, though, favoring the cool weather. Look, look at that, negative four degrees for one year. Uh, again, that, that's, a, that's, a, that's, a, that's a decent anomaly right there. And um, again, much of the United States kind of staying around average, but um, there is quite a bit of a margin here. You could see it's from two to four. So this is around two degrees below average. Definitely chillier, again, favoring the south. And I think I have a compilation of all the years combined in terms of, pre uh, in terms of temperatures. Notice this is what it looks like. Again, favoring warmth during La Nina towards the south and the northeast. Not always the southeast. Look at that towards the south of Texas. Staying pretty cool. Again, last year we saw the La Nina that brought pretty good, good cold conditions. And really the north and northwest favoring cool weather, which again, it's a it's a trend. And if you were to look up a La Nina pattern, this is kind of a classic outflow of this. And again, this doesn't necessarily mean the northeast isn't going to see snow. You could still see large systems. 2017, 2018, if you recall March, they saw three nor'easters. And I'm not saying this year's going to be like that, but... It could be better. It could be worse in terms of snow. It could be like last year. I, th I think last year New York City picked up 27 inches with one snowstorm. Or maybe not 27. It was like, it was in the 20s though, I remember. Um, so, you know, last year wasn't necessarily bad for the Northeast in terms of snow. And each La Nina is different, which is kind of a good thing. Because, you know, at least you won't see, uh, you can't really predict it. But it's also a bad thing because it could be warm <laughs> for the snow lovers. All right, and in terms of precip uh, classic, you can see favoring the northwest with lots of rain, precipitation, um, and that's a good thing. We would need that. Notice, unfortunately, the southwest is drier, but everywhere else, a bit wetter in the Great Lakes. Again, you could assume it's quite a bit more uh, moisture. And towards the south, southeast, a bit drier, which, again, is a, a favored thing through most La Ninas, but, again, not necessarily a, um, a decisive factor. If you recall, 2017, during the La Nina winter, December, there was a massive snowstorm across the south. I think Atlanta picked up several inches, many states across the south. And again, all it takes is one little occurrence, one little system, and a perception of winter has completely changed. That's, that's how it is. And that's unfortunate because a lot of times, you know, 
it could still be a warm winter. You get one really cold blast and people are going to be like, wow, that was a tough winter. And the rest was a moderate winter, right? So um, it's it's tough to predict these forecasts because even if you have something like this, um, you know, very, very cold, or uh, you have something like this where it's very, very warm and you, many areas pick up a ton of snow, which is, again, so possible. You were technically right by predicting a warm winter, but everyone's going to be like, it was so snowy. What are you talking about? But again, it's all based on average, and uh, average means what you're usually expecting across the winter. So, um, yeah, that's basically it. Uh, that's all I have for you today. Just wanted to present this information. The conclusion I want to make is obviously it's speculation. It's a far out time from what we're going to experience in the winter. We're still far away. But I, if you were to ask me right now, what I favor, I would expect a warmer fall, maybe not a heat wave, but a warmer, warmer fall for sure, especially towards the southern states, um, which would be a good thing, uh, probably, because a lot of the southern states this year haven't been too warm, um, spe specifically talking about Texas, um, and again, I think it will be a warmer fall, and in terms of the winter, I wouldn't say I don't see any indications of a massive cold, you know, historic winter, but I think it will be on a snowier side, wetter side, lots of precip, similar to last year. And in terms of the cold air, um, I'm undecided. Honestly, I, I, I think it will, there will, it will be more cooler than warmer, but it, it's iffy. Honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if it's a really cold winter or if it's a year like 27 or um, you saw in 2005, 2006, where it's just a generally warmer winter. Could go either way, but I do think it will be wetter, which could mean snowier. All right, so yeah, a, a dramatic uh, winter ahead of us. Lani is usually bring extremes, which isn't really a good thing, but um, yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed. Hopefully you learned something new, and I'll catch you all in the next episode. See ya. Bye.